It's first. You give me a massive clap. Oh, like. Even bigger. Even bigger, like. <laughs> or like. Can you give me a big clap? No. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh. Clap. I want it to be dramatic. <laughs> I think everybody is a, is, a, is a gamer. I think people sometimes don't get exposed to games, don't get the chance to play games, don't consider themselves a gamer, and so they, they wouldn't call themselves gamers. But I think they're just people who haven't found the right game or found the right experience. Games now is so wide and broad that there, there is something for, for everyone, I think. So I think the, the, the potential for the industry is so big because of that. For me, I'm not really like a fan of titles per se. So I see it more as a lifestyle rather than an actual title because it's something I've grown up with. It's a part of who I am. So it's not necessarily I'm a gamer because I play games. It's just something I've grown with. And it's just a part of me. So more, yeah, lifestyle rather than a title. Um, so to me, a gamer is anyone who I can share the joy of video games with. So, and the example I'd give is my mum, who would not call herself a gamer. Um, but we taught her to play Overcooked, <laughs> and we taught her to play Smash Bros, but she's not very good. Um, but growing up, she also really liked games like Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton, and just being able to talk about those games with her, to me, um, makes her a gamer. <laughs> Gamers that are perceived in the media are not the gamers that exist, usually. Um, so I studied this a bit at university, we had did a bit of moral panic and stuff, and um, it was mostly around the, the surge of emo when that came out with My Chemical Romance and how uh, they worried all the parents with like all the stuff that emo songs had going on in them. Um, but a very similar thing happens with video games and the violence in video games and how the violence in video games is more is more important than the violence in TV, film and other media um, and it's no different and the studies that have been taken out you know around violence in video games they're then they're, they're not conclusive in any way to make make gamers more violent people or bad people so um, it's a very it's a very media fueled perception if you think that gamers are bad and I know that there's stereotypes I know that there's um yeah, particular images that come to mind when you say gamer, but um, it's much, much broader than you, you've ever considered. Um, and it's only when you bring spaces like these to, to people that they realise what it means. To be honest, anything, if you do something that's like jeopardises your um, mental health, because I think that is what everyone thinks what, what games do. Like you don't time schedule like um, how to hang out with friends and stuff. But I think that's with everything. Um, and if that's the case, I think just be open-minded, try it out yourself, and know that gamers aren't there to waste time. It's there to social, you're there to socialize, you're there to immerse yourself in a different world, you're there to like create like anything you want because there are different types of games. Um, yeah, be open-minded, try out different games. There's a game for you. <laughs> I would say The Sims 2 was a game that got me into video games. I don't play it as much as I used to, but um, The Sims 2, I used to see it. My friend would play it on her PC all the time, and I would see all of the families that she would make and the stories that she'd come up with, and then I got to have Sims 2 and Sims 3, and I think Sims 3, Sims 2 was what got me into gaming, but Sims 3 made me fall in love with gaming. Um, just because of the different possibilities that I had and all the things that I could do, um, all the different expansion packs and the, all the other worlds that you can create and stuff. It was just really, really good. So at university, well, if you go back, I used to play the election simulator on the BBC computer with my friend Joanne. And we used to, it was hilarious because we used to run the same scenario every time and get the same outcome every time. There's a quest, there's something to do with madness there. Um, but we used to, because I really into politics as well. Um, but actually, a little bit later at university, it was the Tomb Raider era. So I just remember sitting around in dark rooms watching other people play Tomb Raider. And obviously, you know, it was amazing because it was kind of, 
a single player game, but actually it was quite a multiplayer experience because everyone was chipping in and saying, try that, move that, you know, because it's puzzle based. And so many brains made playing Tomb Raider in that era great fun. Um, but then what happened was I became a QA tester because I actually did French and Spanish at university. And um, games are generally localized. And when games are localized, it breaks the game, uh, which you kind of can't quite believe, but literally adding like an accent on a French word can change coding. The other thing that typically happens is sentences are different lengths, so someone has to play through the game to make sure that one, the language is correct, but secondly, the language implementation has not broken the game. That's what I did. So, and the two games that I tested were Abe's Exodus and Abe's Odyssey. They are such good games, um, and they were recently remade actually, um, worth checking out. So yes, so in tandem, the university playing Tomb Raider and then getting this job, they're the two games that were seminal in my life. Massive, massive, there you go.